Hello everyone, Delta4096 here. I want to quickly apologize for the lateness of this video. I delayed releasing it, uh, or making it rather, uh, simply because the new way XVM is done and installed, there was a lot of glitches and kinks to be worked out. So I gave the guys working on it time, uh, plenty of time to get most of the kinks out, and that's where we're at this, at this point. They've got 90-99% of all that stuff worked out to where XVM is working smoothly and uh, efficiently. So I'm just going to jump right into getting this stuff done. So there are two files you're going to need to download, and I'll provide the links to where you can get to them. You'll need to download the most recent XVM. For me, it's the 5.0.0 Test 5 for, the, for this video. And then your clan icons for whichever one server you're on. Uh, as you've noticed, there's no more XVM stat. Uh, that's because the way XVM works now is you no longer need Doken Library or the XVM stat stuff. X, uh, they've made it to where XVM works just like any other mod that you can install, such as Jimbo's Reticle mod or the Engine Sound mod that they, um, out, that's out there. So once you get those two down, once you get the files you need downloaded, you're going to go into your Start menu, open up Computer, uh, drag that over there. Oh, on a side note, Windows 8 users, if you're watching this, we, uh, XVM will now work with Windows 8 with no problem. So that's no longer an issue for Windows 8 users. Anyways, we'll get. Uh, you want to go start menu into computer, local disks, your local disk into the games folder here. Open up the World of Tanks folder, and then open up Res Mods. Next, open up the XVM RAR file that you downloaded. Drag that over here. As you can see, there's change logs and readmes. You can read those if you want to. Um, it just tells you what all has changed and how to use XVM basically. Uh, but anyways, open up the Res Mods in the RAR file. As you can see, you have two folders, the 8.8, which corresponds right here, and the XVM folder. If you've never used XVM before, you're not going to have this folder over here in your res mods folder in World of Tanks. Now, you might think it'd be easy enough just to drag the XVM folder over there, except there's a lot of extra files in this XVM folder that you don't need. So what you can do is simply go into your, right here under res mods, right-click anywhere under the folders that you have, go to New, and click on Folder, and title it XVM, and then hit Enter and you'll have the folder there. Obviously I'm not going to do that because I already have the folder there. But that's an easy way to go ahead and get that in there. Then you'll open up the XVM folder and drag this mods folder right here. You'll drag it into the XVM folder. I'm not going to bother with that because I already have everything in there, but you'll drag it into there until and let it move all that stuff in there. Then you'll come back out and go to 8.8 .8 and open that up and drag both these folders into the 8.8 .8 folder under res mods just like you see up here you'll want to drag it though both these folders into that area and believe it or not that's it for installing XVM now it's that simple and uh, if you have any questions if I went a little too fast please feel free to ask in the comments send me a message on board of tanks or YouTube it doesn't matter I'll try to answer when I can uh, now let's move on to installing the clan icons. You'll open up the clan icons RAR file. It's a pretty big file, so expect it to take a little bit when you install it. Open up res mods. As you can see, it's located in that XVM folder. So you'll do that. You'll open up the XVM. You see that the res folder here, you will drag that into the XVM folder. Let it copy all the clan icons over. It's pretty big, so it'll take 30 seconds to a minute max to copy all those files over. Now the clan icons will be available for you to see when you're in game. And that's it for that part. Now, the final step is creating a configuration file for XVM. It's what'll help you be able to see stats, the prediction for, the predictions for each round, um, and any of the other special things you want to put on. I'm going to show you, as I usually do, my custom configuration file for XVM. You can toy around with it on your, yourself or just go straight off of mine. Um, I've also found a new website for the configuration editor. Editor, It's completely in English and a lot easier to follow. So we're going to hop over to it real fast and go ahead and do it. Uh, get this configuration file set up. Under author, I'm going to put myself obviously. Uh, everything's like that is fine. Uh, language, keep it to auto. The only thing I do is I check the Enable Player Statistics Global Switch box on this page. Uh, everything else I leave alone. Now we'll move over to Login. 
I do keep the skip intro movie uh, box checked because it skip, skips the uh, T for Teen rating thing that pops up. I know it, you know, it gets kind of monotonous having to hit escape all the time to skip through those. Uh, I'll leave it up to you whether you hit auto enter, auto enter into the game. Uh, that will what basically what it does once it gets you to log on screen, it'll automatically log you in instead of you having to hit connect every time. Uh, I don't do that simply because I feel safer just doing it myself. Uh, anyways, ping servers I enable so you can see how well uh, how what you're ping for the east and west server if you're on the NA servers, so you can connect to the fastest one. Uh, that's all I do on this page or this particular tab. So next we'll move over to hangar. I keep I don't hide the tutorial icon. I do keep the XWN checked, um, and I basically don't turn uh, change anything else on this page except for the ping server, so I can see how well I'm connected to each server, uh, how well I'll do on each server. Uh, that's all I do here. Uh, now we'll move on to battle. I do take the clock and leave it blank. That will make it to where it doesn't show up inside the battle because it can sometimes cover up the uh, how many hits you've done and how much damage you've caused. Uh, so that way um, doesn't uh, get in the way. And that's the only thing I change here on battle. Now under markers where we're going to be doing the most stuff. So you'll monitor the two. As you can see, ally, alive, and normal are all darkened. Well, I'm going to darken the enemy one as well so everything stays uh, equal between allies and enemies. Um, you can alter the dead and extended ones if you want to. I just leave those alone and just do what you have to, what I, you ha uh, see darkened here. So I don't mess with any of these um, tabs here except for the clan icon. I do go to it and I hit visible. So as you can see in the picture, now the clan icons show above the tanks. I then go to text fields where, as you can see, the vehicle name and current health of the two text fields currently enabled. And that's where it says IS3 1500 out of 1500. Under the vehicle name, when we're going to change the Y position to negative 47. So it, as you can see, it moves it up closer to the clan icon. Next, we're going to go back up to the text fields where you see vehicle name and current health. And we're going to click the plus symbol here where it says insert line if you hover over it. So as you can see, it makes text 1. We're going to click on it so we're actually editing it. We're going to rename it to player name. Its Y position will be negative 35. Just like the uh, vehicle name used to be. Um, as you can see down here under text format, it has text in all capital, and as you can see, that's what's showing up in the picture. We're going to delete text, click in this box here, this drop-down box, which is called Select Macro, and what I normally do is click on the player name with clan name. That way I can see who it is and what clan they are in, showing up just under the IS-3 or Ferdinand, as you can see in the picture. This way I know who it is and what clan they're from. Some players' names will be too big and the clan icons will get covered up. That's okay because you can easily look at it by hitting the tab and seeing who they actually are. At least you know what the, who they are and what they're in when you see this. So with that change, that's all we do here. And like I said, if you want to play around with it, you can. Um, but that's what I do for my personal configuration. Next, we're going to move to the tab Capture Bar. I just want to double check a couple things here. Okay, that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> Excuse me. Next is Minimap. I uncheck the centering zoom minimap box because if you're not careful when you hit alt or control, I forget which one it is, it'll actually bring the map up into the middle of the screen which can really mess with you. It's control. Like if you want to go click on a sector, you know, like attention to what uh, A1 or whatever, you hit control to bring up your cursor and then click on the map. Well, the centering zoom minimap thing, when you hit control, it will bring the minimap onto the center of the screen blocking everything out of your view except for the minimap. So I can uncheck that. Next, under the maximum unit draw square area, I check both these boxes. This way on the mini map, you can see your view range in a circle, and on a square on the map is your maximum view uh, draw range on, in the game. Like if, if you go into settings in your graphics and you set draw distance to maximum, that box will show you just how far that is on the, on the mini map. That way you can, if somebody's just outside that draw distance, you can z you can move up a little bit to get him inside it, so you can line up a, a good shot on him. So that's what I do with that part. Now, under the loading tab, I do have show chance to win. I check that box every time, and that's the only thing I check here. You can check the show experimental chance to win formula. 
Uh, I never, I've never bothered with it because I don't really care. I just want to see, you know, what's my chance of winning. I'll leave clock format alone on this one. Uh, that's all we do here. Under tab, I check the show chance to win again, and that's the only thing I change there. Under player panel one. I do enable the enemy spotted status marker at the right panel. This way, if you look at the enemy panel on the right showing what tanks and their names, there'll be an asterisk un next to their tank if they have never been spotted. If there is no asterisk, it means they have been spotted once before. Artie automatically has the asterisk removed. I don't know why, but it is, and that's how it's automatically set. Um, next, I go to battle results, and I do the show chance to win part. Uh, that's one of the things they're still working on trying to get showing up, but it does work. It will work eventually. Um, and that is the rest of, that's the last of what I do. Um, so, let me double check something here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, under hotkeys, I just remembered. Under hotkeys, uncheck the hold key for zoomed minimap box. Otherwise, you'll, like I said, you'll have that issue of the minimap popping up in front of your screen. Uh, then we won't be able to see anything. So that's it for my configuration file. So once you've fin finished doing whatever you want, playing around with it, getting your, your perfect customization done, you want to hit save. And it'll automatically have the file name. Save it to your desktop so it's easy to find and hit save. Now minimize your browser. There, it, as you can see right here, is my xvm.xc file. You're simply going to take that and drag it into the xvm folder here. As you can see, there is mine inside of it. Drag it there, and you are done. That has XVM completely configured how you want it. It's completely installed. Now all you have to do is run War of Tanks like you normally would, clicking on the thing, bringing up the launcher, and hitting play. And everything will be set how you want it. If you're still, if you're curious about what some of the things means in XVM, you can check out my uh, XVM Explained video on my channel. And I really hope that this tutorial has helped. Um, again, I'll provide the links to the uh, both websites that you'll need uh, to be able to download everything you need, and I hope this helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Thanks.